bit. So, we don't get TV at New College, and I, I must have missed out on the fact that Al Gore won the Nobel Peace Prize. Now this came as a big surprise to me since I wouldn't have expected it. When he was nominated, a lot of, a lot of people were laughing, kind of. It's kind of ironic that he has won the Nobel Peace Prize for inciting fear and panic in people. Without climate change, he'd be another washed up politician and still wealthy businessman. He markets climate change as the, the biggest catastrophe ever to happen to the planet. Although in the movie, he says something like, I mean, the movie goes along the lines of about 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit in the next 50 or 100 years. Uh, increase in global temperature average. 2.5 degrees increase in global temperature does not sound like a catastrophe. So now due to his climate change talks, he has the Academy Award, he has books, groupies, and the Nobel Peace Prize. He's loved and adored right now in a way that no American politician is. People seem to have a great need for recognition and, and a need for safety, but a fear of the unknown. Those of the world that are looking to have that power and admiration and love are more than happy to create an image of fear and point out. Uh, they create, they 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 find this problem, this catastrophe thing, and they point out a way out of this problem that we're causing on ourselves. This danger threatens the world or America or all people or something. The media and the press are more than happy to exaggerate that image of danger, such as right now we have the uh, MRSA scare the uh, hospital superbug that's gotten out and infecting thousands of people. Now here's my word on it. This has recently gotten in the news not because there is an outbreak or an epidemic right now. It's because in the latest issue of JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, they have one of the first studies that wanted to see the incidence of MRSA. Now MRSA stands for methylacillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. That's why they refer to it sometimes as staph infection. Now this staph infection thing has, over the years, when we came up with pen penicillin, penicillin was prescribed to people uh, as an antibiotic. And it was used very, very much because it was so, uh, it worked all the time. But it was overprescribed, and they would they would prescribe it even if you didn't even have a bacterial infection. You might have a viral one, and doctors would just throw penicillin at you. Eventually, some strains of bacteria got to be resistant to penicillin to such a high exposure, it's, it would be a normal thing in their environment kind of thing, and they would evolve, and they would be penicillin resistant. Then they got this better thing, and it was methicillin. And then they used that a lot, and then now, so that's what we have. It's methicillin resistance after Cocktail. So it's on the news lot for essentially no identifiable reason. It's called the superbug, which, and, and they give you the idea that there's no, a way, there's no way to treat it at all. That it's, it's resistant to every type of, like, anything you throw at. Which is unfortunately not exactly true. The hospital strain, you know, easily is, is, is pretty tough, but the one in normal you know, environment outside the hospital, there's plenty of stuff you can use to cure it. Now, it's on the news because essentially we like it. There, we, there's something about, something that we can all talk about and we can all have the same feelings upon each other. Fear tends to bind people together. They are happy to give people what they want. And, you know, an even better version of it than is actually true. And people are happy to take it the governments and bigger institutions and associations like schools or this or that are happy to oblige and you know follow what the public wants because a happy public is a happy public who pays the taxes required to stop the horror, mass hysteria, moral panic, and such. The scare always seems to be some form of an abstract future concept that has very subtle beginnings in our time, such as global warming, bird flu, MRSA. Regardless of proof or con, the hypes do fade out because people forget about things. It's a crazy thing for two weeks on the news already and they're getting tired of it. And it's not affecting them. Anna Nicole Smith, some missing white girl who's in Aruba, it doesn't affect them. Two weeks is enough. Is it summer of the shark? Is the El Nino the worst ever? I don't know, but two weeks is usually enough.
led Duck Tho, who refused it because he was apparently planning the communist conquerage of South Vietnam. Gorbachev picked one up at, for ending the Cold War. Rigoberta Menchu in 1992 got one, even though she was exposed as making up her entire story of Guatemalan oppression of their Mayan Indian population. And her brother was not actually killed by the government conspiracy. And I'm definitely not saying I said any of those names right. Little old Irina Sendler turned out to not stand a chance against Al Gore. She saved over 2,500 children during the Holocaust, but 